Tash Dile, this is Sakina Bhatt and welcome to Tibet This Week, a weekly news on Tibet, His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Central Tibetan Administration. Let's look at the headlines. Tibetan Plateau could turn into desert, says His Holiness the Dalai Lama. His Holiness the Dalai Lama sends message for late increase memorial service. Concerns grow over China's expansion of forced labor programs in Tibet. China continues to claim no disappearance at United Nations Human Rights Council. Renewed and robust Tibet policy only way forward for India, says CTA President Dr. Lutsang Singhe. CTA President appeal for adherence to COVID-19 guidelines after cases in premises. Indian journalist arrested for spying for China. Three Tibetan activists begin Manali Delhi Peace March. In an interview with Eugenio Derbez, a renowned Mexican actor and filmmaker on Tuesday this week, His Holiness the Dalai Lama expressed his grave concern over the global warming and environmental degradation. His Holiness the Dalai Lama recalled his interaction with environmental experts who predicted that Tibetan Plateau, known for its large reserve of fresh waters, could turn into desert in a decade or two Hello. if the global warming continues to rise at the current rate. I very much concerned about environment, about Tibet. Tibet, usually you see people call roof of the world. So the, uh, you, all these major rivers which cover whole Asia mm -hmm. come from Tibet. So preserve Tibetan ecology is very, very important. The conversation saw discussions on topics such as importance of ancient Indian knowledge on training of mind, emotional hygiene and practice of compassion. His Holiness the Dalai Lama sent a message for the memorial service in honor of Li Tinghui on Saturday last week. His Holiness yeah, lauded Li Tinghui's commitment about democracy, freedom and preservation Taiwan. of Chinese culture so, in Taiwan. Now, as his uh, close friend, uh, I always remember him and as a Buddhist I always pray, uh, firstly, I appreciate, deeply appreciate his effort. An official memorial service to honor the late Taiwan president, Li Tenghui, was held in New Taipei City on Saturday last week. 63 parliamentarians from the Inter-Parliamentary Alliance on China issued a joint statement condemning China on reports of forced labor in Tibet. In the joint statement, the legislators called upon their respective governments to take actions to condemn the atrocities and prevent further human rights abuses by taking actions such as imposing sanctions on individuals responsible by calling for reciprocal access to Tibet in order to conduct an independent international investigation into the situation of Tibetan people. The President of Central Tibetan Administration thanked the parliamentarian signatories and called up on the United Nations to break its silence on Tibet and heed the global calls for appointment of special rapporteur to inquire into the human rights violations in Tibet, Xinjiang, Hong Kong and other regions in the People's Republic of China. Established on 4th June 2020, the Interparliamentary Alliance on China is an international cross-party alliance of parliamentarians focusing on reforms necessary on how democratic countries should approach China. The joint statement is signed by members of parliament from 16 different countries including US, UK, Germany, Italy and Canada. Reports of Chinese government pushing increasing number of Tibetan rural laborers into recently built military-style training centers and turning them into factory workers 
have given rise to concern about the deteriorating human rights situation inside Tibet. Ed Rinzen, an independent Tibet and Xinjiang researcher, has compiled the core findings about China's forced labor program. Uh, it has been reported that uh, since uh, January till July, some 500, more than half a million Tibetans have already been trained uh, for, on the, in this vocational training, and more than 50,000 Tibetans have already been deployed or within the Tibet autonomous region and some 3,000 plus Tibetans have already been transferred to other parts of China. So this is a very, uh, very worrying development for us. Uh, forced labor situation that we have seen in East Turkestan, East Turkestan is now being replicated. In fact, I would say it has come back to haunt Tibetans and Tibet. Tibet Policy Institute's researcher Tenzing Lado said these actions of Chinese government are aimed to construct ideological loyalty to the party in the name of development. The recent visits to Tibet by Chinese uh, Foreign Secretary Wang Yi and the member of Politburo Wang Yang, along with Xi Jinping's statements during the 7th Tibet Walk Forum, highlighted the state's need to build ethnic and national unity while seeing religion and ethnic identity as a source of potential threat to that unity. Therefore, these labor camps, which has been in existence in Tibet for decades, represent the CCP's larger objective of using the cover of development to further construct an ideological loyalty to the state as well as the national ethnic unity according to its interpretation of Chinese socialist society. The ongoing 45th session of the United Nations Human Rights Council witnessed disinformation by China on cases of enforced disappearances, especially in one of the longest drawn UN cases of enforced disappearances, which is Tibet's 11th pension lama, Genden Chukinima. The working group's report noted that it has transmitted six urgent appeals, three joint allegation letters, one general allegation letter and one other letter totaling to 11 communications to government of China, including one on pension lama Genden Chukinima. China has not yet issued invitation to the working group to visit China, even though the working group had placed the request for visit and sent repeated reminders. This year marks 25th year of enforced disappearance of Pension Lama Genden Chukinima. Speaking at a virtual panel discussion on Tibet and Sino-Indian relations, the need for a policy reappraisal, organized by the Foundation for Nonviolent Alternatives, a non-profit research institute based in New Delhi, Dr. Singhe said that the past lessons tells us that competition is the only way forward with China and that India should assert its leadership in defending democracy and win over this ideological war with China. India should save itself, given the uh, reality. Because if you go by uh, history, uh, I think all the prime ministers of India, except for Lal Bahadur Shastri, you know, chose cooperation with China, thinking they'll get some dividends over competition with China. It was Lal Bahadur Shastri who said, I want to recognize Tibetan government exile. I want to do various things for Tibet, but it was short-lived. So he wanted to confront China, but he didn't live long. So uh, that policy uh, never materialized. But all the prime ministers since then and before chose cooperation. And now there's, you know, uh, nothing or bare minimum to show for all the cooperation extended by the various leaders of the uh, government of India. Other experts such as eminent legal advisor and professor of international law, Dr. Michael Van Velt, Van Prague, set forward suggestions that India and other like-minded countries could embrace and act upon while former governor of Arunachal Pradesh and COAS General J.J. Singh presented an overview of how the relationship had evolved over the centuries, detailing the historical and geopolitical context. 
While addressing the press on the recent cases of COVID-19 reported from a local bank in the Central Tibetan Administration premises where two bank staff tested positive for COVID-19, President Dr. Lopsang Singe asked the CTA staff to strictly adhere to all the guidelines set by the administration. As soon as the case was reported, CTA immediately began with contact tracing and announced a complete lockdown of the offices. In the meanwhile, 57 CTA staff who have visited the bank or come in contact with the COVID positive cases were tested and they were all found to be negative. Dr. Singhi also alerted Tibetan people against a much bigger threat indicating the alleged interference by the Chinese government linked hackers targeting the upcoming general election. A Delhi-based freelance journalist who wrote a series of fake misleading articles targeting the institution of His Holiness the Dalai Lama and CTA's leadership in 2018 was arrested by Delhi police on charges of spying and acting as an agent of China. Rajiv Sharma was booked under the Indian Official Secrets Act on September 14 for passing sensitive information to Chinese intelligence agencies about India's border strategy, army deployment, defense acquisitions, foreign policy and information related to His Holiness the Dalai Lama, Delhi police said in a statement on September 19. With his arrest, it also came to light that Rajiv Sharma was using his media credentials as a front to defame His Holiness the Dalai Lama's image, delegitimize the CTA leadership and collect sensitive information for Chinese intelligence in return for monetary incentives. On Wednesday this week, three Tibetans have embarked on a voluntary peace march from North Indian town of Manali to the Indian capital, New Delhi. Tsiring Wangdu, Tsiring Dundup and Chungda are from the Tibetan settlement in Kulu, Manali. They will submit their petition to the Chinese consulate in New Delhi demanding the Chinese government to heed to the Tibetans' call for return of His Holiness the Dalai Lama to Tibet resolution of issue of Tibet based on the middle way approach and release of all Tibetan political prisoners including the Pension Lama without any precondition. The international movement called NOW based in Brussels organized a 24-hour marathon event and discussions to highlight the oppressed nations and regions under China on International Democracy Day. The issues of Tibet, Taiwan, Hong Kong, East Turkestan and South Mongolia were the main focus. Representative Tashi Finsok was invited to speak on how democracy was introduced in the Tibetan community. He explained in detail and went through the various phases of Tibetan democratization. So much for this week. See you next time and have a great weekend.